All right, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I made this album cover in Blender. I'm gonna go step by step through the entire process and explain everything I did. So if you guys have any questions about anything, let me know in the comments and I will answer every single one. All right, let's get started. All right, so we open Blender and the first thing I do here is actually add a plane and that's gonna be the kind of floor to this album cover. Um, it doesn't have to extend too far because I'm gonna have this volumetric, volumetric um, sh uh, fog kind of covering most of the scene. Um, second thing I do, I plop in my camera. I want it to be a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So I set the height and width to 3000 and then I plop this human in here. And to get this human into my Blender level, um, I used a plugin called Human Gen and uh, basically you pick it through a bunch of humans but when I pop this guy in here I actually went through all of his preset materials um, and kind of removed pretty much everything his eyeballs his eyebrows his skin his fingernails his hair everything because I want to go for this kind of not like a mannequin but I wanted it to not really represent like a person or feel like there is someone in this box that I'm creating. I wanted it to be more of an abstract look of like this character, I don't know. So I thought just texturing this person all white kind of just made them more of like an abstract symbolism, surreal type of thing instead of like an actual person. Um, it's not like a, I don't know, I didn't want it to look like this form of torture or something like that. <laughs> so once I got this human in here, um, I started, Posing him, I use the pose tool and I'm kind of grabbing all of his joints. And as you can see, I'm kind of struggling, but I'm grabbing all of his joints and kind of rotating them and uh, changing their position. So it kind of looks he's looks like he's in this fetal position, sort of, which is kind of interesting. But you can see the more granular you get, it kind of falls apart a little bit. Like these fingers, I'm kind of. I would probably say I'm being a little bit too specific. And when you start doing that, I feel like you kind of get lost. Like you get further away from what you actually want sometimes. But um, in the end, this is kind of the pose I settled on. I don't think it had to be too, too realistic just cause it's gonna be kind of far away from the camera. Um, you kind of get the picture with how it is. So once I got this guy in here, um, I kind of positioned him slightly differently, rotated him so it kind of looks like he's actually sitting in this cube and I created the cube. Um, so to do that, I mean, I didn't really do anything special. I just added a cube to the level and scaled it up. Um, I kind of used wireframe mode to kind of check the composition because there's that middle part, like each corner um, of the box. What am I saying? The corner, I didn't want the corner to kind of like split this character in half really. I kind of wanted it to be offset a little bit. So he's sitting in between the the corner closest to the camera and the corner further furthest away from the camera. So um, I knew kind of my vision was that he would be sitting in a glass box and pro tip to anyone who's ever really doing anything with any kind of realism in it. The trick to making something kind of look realistic is always adding like these imperfections. So uh, what I wanted to do here was create this glass texture, this glass material, and um, basically add this kind of like dust to it, um, just to add some kind of realism to it. So um, what I did basically, so I'm not super knowledgeable about node-based materials in Blender. Um, so I think I'm pretty sure I looked up a YouTube tutorial and followed that to get kind of the look um, I was going for. Um, and then I kind of edited it based off of that. Um, so I think I actually downloaded a texture from texturelabs.org and I put that in there. So you can see that in the bottom left right now. And I'm basically like displacing that where I'm kind of using the nodes to create a mask on the box. So like the, the black parts, there will be no mask and the white parts there will be. So you can kind of see how that's coming apart, coming to fruition here. Um, looks kind of like space is kind of on top of the box right now, but that's basically what I'm doing. Um, and to do that, I believe I'm editing the roughness. So that, that dust particle effect grunge look, that's gonna be coming up as a roughness material. And that's kind of how you get that dusty look. Cause I guess that's kind of what it is in the real world. So 
connecting all these uh, wires and stuff like that and I'm testing out my renders and this is pretty close to kind of how I want it to look, I think. Um, so the tip I told you about the glass adding textures kind of applies to pretty much everything, um, which is why I added this texture to the floor. Um, it's kind of tiling pretty poorly, I think, but I don't think it's really a big deal because you're not really going to see that much of the floor. And with the floor, you are going to see you're on such an angle that you won't really be able to see the tiling really. Um, what I do want though, is that you kind of want the details of the floor, like you want a little bit of displacement um, in the floor to kind of get a material response from the lighting because the the way the camera is positioned um, you're gonna see like all the little kind of cracks and crevices and pieces of rock and you know those very fine details in the floor which I think really adds something to whatever you're making um, with that light so if you ever want to kind of see what I mean in real life, if you ever take a flashlight um, and then kind of like point it at yourself when you're close to the floor, you can see all like these little pieces of dust and stuff like that. What am I talking about? I don't know. Um, all right. So now that I've kind of put together all the materials, everything's kind of in place. Um, I kind of wanted the entire scene to uh, kind of be taken over by this fog that you can't really see through too much and to do that I actually added another cube and filled the entire scene with it and then added a um, volumetric material to that cube so the cube isn't even a solid thing anymore it's just a volume so you can kind of see what that means here um, the white parts being where like this volume would be and the black would be where it's not and instead of like instead of editing kind of the sides of the cube, you're editing like the full, I guess, <laughs> volume of the cube. So what what it what's inside, sort of. So you can kind of see how that works here. Like it's looking kind of foggier. Um, you can definitely add like these different textures and you can kind of change the volume of the fog material to have like kind of waves like it would in real life. Um, you can animate those waves. I didn't animate anything because I'm just making a static image. Um, but there's that. So here you can see I'm kind of getting near the end, which is when I like to kind of experiment a little bit more with the lighting. One thing I wasn't really happy with was the ceiling because I wanted the ceiling to actually emit light onto um, the I don't know what, what's this called like I, I wanted the the ceiling to emit this purple light onto the character as if like the light was part of the ceiling um, so it had like kind of a roof the emission wasn't working great for me like it was doing something but not really what I wanted so what I ended ended up doing was creating a rectangular light um, I think it's called an area light in Blender and I scaled out that to, I scaled that to the size of the box and uh, once I did that I think it definitely looked pretty close to what I was going for um, so as you can kind of see here um, yeah I, I think I was waiting for it to render there but um, the, the light was kind of doing what I wanted it to do, but I didn't get that material response from the ground that I wanted. Like I wanted kind of like the, the, the light to go down, but also kind of spread out through the glass and hit the ground to get that material response. Um, so I think I was editing, um, if sometimes in other software programs, software programs what am i saying sound like a boomer um you can kind of edit the something called the barn door so instead of shining the light directly down you kind of like shine it down and out because that's what i wanted and then i was also editing since the light is actually going through the glass here um, i was actually editing the material as well so i wanted it to kind of let let what am I saying? Let light go through the the 
glass a little bit more, but also kind of maintain this uh, kind of dusty look on the box. So we're actually getting pretty close to the final material here. Um, at this point, I think it's pretty close to done. I'm mostly just um, kind of experimenting. And as I do that, I do feel a little like there's something missing. Um, I started trying to like expand the light, move the light in different areas, have multiple lights, like have one like off, off the screen and kind of like emitting a light from behind, um, stuff like that. So actually when I made this, uh, this album cover, light linking did not exist and I totally could have used it at this point, but I guess that's how she goes. So as you can see here, I'm still experimenting. Honestly, I'm watching this right now. And uh, yeah, okay, so this part I feel like really changes the artwork because I felt like something was missing. It felt kind of empty, but I just duplicated everything I had here and kind of moved it around the scene um, just three or four more times. And I think that completely changed it. It almost tells like a story, like it, it creates the story of kind of, you know, like these, these people, these characters are kind of being held here. Um, I don't know. I think when, whenever I try to create kind of any piece of art, I always try to add some kind of story, like a meaning of what I'm making. I think that really drives something home a little bit. Like it really pushes it, I think. So I did a little bit more experiment experimentation with the texture as I added a light a little bit off scene. And this is basically it. Um, once I rendered this out of Blender, I brought in a Photoshop to add a little bit more texture and color correct the whole image as a whole. And this is basically the end. So guys, if you have any questions in the, what am I saying? If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll answer every single one. Appreciate you watching this and, uh, Thank you very much. I'll just keep letting it play. See ya.